Hello and welcome to another edition of Wardy's Waffle. I hope you've all had a good week. There's lots of drills been running around the country I've seen on social media when I've been driving around on the lighter ground. Um, there might have been some heavy land uh, put in, planted with various crops, but ours is too sticky underneath at the minute. We're going to be another probably three weeks yet before we, we get going with, it, with any planting of any crops. We've still got some sugar beet in the ground and uh, we normally do have this time of year up on the light land on, on the heath, but uh, we don't normally have as much as this. And the a lot of the reason is is because of the frost and uh, and also Newark have actually slowed down the throughput of beet. Now the frost will touch on that first. Uh, you saw in one or two of my videos a few weeks ago that uh, we had it, the crop inspected, and luckily we're uh, uh, the frost damage we've got from the sugar from the on the sugar beet is very minimal. Whereas I know some farmers have actually gone the other way. The whole hog and actually had to have whole fields written off and not harvested because the, the frost has got into the top and just made it unviable to harvest it. When we get lifting it next week, we're going to do one or two videos for you. You'll see it lifting. Uh, we might have to top it a little bit harder so we leave the crown of the beet in the, in the field, but we'll see how we get on with that. Yeah, just touching on why Newark throughput slowed down is that about two weeks ago, they slowed it down to 5,500. Um, tons a, a day. They're normally around about nine and a half thousand, nine thousand, and this, this last week they've actually slowed it down to four and a half thousand tons a day total. And this is to, so that they meet their water um, requirements and the certain conditions they have on how they deal with the water because they put some of it back into into the Trent, into the River Trent nearby. Um, they have got a new uh, seven million pound water treatment plant going up. You've seen from my videos uh, that that's happening. So that that is going on, but it's as obviously affected us. The other slightly annoying thing is that Whissington um, is now shut, I think, and so all the beat is coming to Newark from wherever it, it happens to be, uh, still in a field, which I'd have rather seen Whissington, which is a flagship factory, stayed open and some of our beat gone to gone to Whissington rather than the other way around. But anyway, that's not happened. So so um, that's the reason for a lot of, uh, lot, of, lot of the beet still in the ground and Newark's still open. Still on sugar beet, uh, dirt tears. Those of you who are regular viewers of my videos, know that I've put a, a challenge in or a complaint in because of our high soil tears um, that um, uh, were imposed on us from the sugar beet that went in the factory around Christmas time. That um, one of those complaints was actually, um, uh, if you like, agreed, but it was only dropped from 13.2% sugar to 112 which is not enough. We should be a lot lower than that. So I've now put a formal complaint in or formal appeal, I suppose. It's not a complaint. It's a formal appeal you can use um, as a process. It will be heard when the factory is closed at the end of the season. Uh, shortly and uh, I've put a lot of backup evidence that we've used two cleaners to try and get as much soil out all the beet was harvested on the same day and uh, and also that um, it's all the soil type was very similar as well and asked them to look at the um, figures from uh, the previous days when it was went in when it was averaging about seven percent um, and we've even had some down to 3.9 so I'll, I'll let you know on that one more thing I just want to touch on before we get into this video this week's update is the empty shelves that we're seeing on supermarkets at the minute yeah all over the place and we've always been warning DEFRA and the government about this that that this would happen but it's so annoying because the supermarkets are putting it down to weather uh, affecting supplies from abroad that is absolute tosh it's not weather it's the fact that they are not paying farmers and producers enough for the crops that they are buying from us and when they refuse to pay um, cost of production plus enough to make a margin. Farmers aren't uh, planting the crops in the field, and I'm talking about vegetables in particular here. And uh, and also, um, Brexit's had an effect on it because of the Labour uh, situation, and that, that's the Labour as in workers, not the Labour Party, um, because the governments uh, did this immigration and the uh, visas and stopping so many people coming into the country to work, and we're massively short on on uh, on workers and pickers coming in, which meant uh, that vegetables were rotting in the field. And Lincolnshire, you've heard me say this before, 27% of the UK vegetables are grown here in Lincolnshire. So a hugely important county and uh, around Boston, Spalding, that area where it's top quality grade one soils rely on a lot of foreign workers coming into the country. So it's not weather related issues, it's down to the supermarkets screwing the prices down on the, what they pay the farmers. And you'll see Tesco's and other supermarkets put out adverts on TV where they say they're having a price freeze on products and they're proud to promote this 
this price freeze. You'll see it. we have frozen the prices of 300 products so that our customers have got cheap food. That is exactly the reason why we're in the situation we're in and why we're in the mess we're in at the minute. Because they set their prices low, when they start negotiating with the farmer, with the producer, they start at a low point and refuse to budge. And this is where the problem is. The price of food is too cheap and the supermarkets are not paying the farmer enough so that they can't uh, re replant the fields, if you like, and it's just not viable. What have we got for you to look at this week? There's a lot been going on this week, and I've been, been away at the NFU conference. So um, we've been screening some of the planings. Fine Turf um, and, uh, and Simon sent in the, uh, his grader or screen, and we've actually put uh, one heap of our planings, some of them, through the screen to take out the big things. So we'll look at that in detail. As I said, I went to the NFU conference, had two days there. Teresa Coffey um, was, uh, was talking at that. Absolutely disgraceful um, performance from her. Uh, she was rude, she was arrogant, um, and uh, it was just the wrong impression to give, to, to give us farmers. There was 1,200 of us there. But, so I've got a few clips of, of, of that. But if you want to see Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, talking, um, I did actually record that live and put that out live. So the whole of his, which is about half an hour, 35 minutes, I'll put the link below this in the description to this video uh, where you can f uh, view that but you can see his whole half an hour but I, I didn't record um, uh, Teresa Coffey which I ought to have done anyway that's the NFU conference and anyway you can see now why I call it Ward is Waffle I'm going to stop waffling I'm going to let you get into this week's update hope you enjoy it thanks very much for watching and uh, if you make it to the end we'll see you there oh yes one last update you can see I'm stood uh, uh, with a sprayer behind me. Quite a few have asked what's the latest on the sprayer. Well, it's not good actually because um, the sprayer was meant to have been delivered to us around December, January time. As of at the moment, they haven't started building the new sprayer. This is Housens. And um, yeah, I'm, we're not happy with it, obviously. We were told it was coming, but there are supply issues. I think they're due to start it this next week, I'm told. Um, so we shall see uh, whether that materialises. But yeah, a bit unhappy that we haven't got the sprayer when we said we're going to have it. But then if there are supply and component issues, then that's, that's out of Housens' control. But in the meantime, I'm just going to turn the camera around and show you. We have actually got a few issues with this one we've had some wheel motors cracked um, and this is because this is the prototype for the Merlin and uh, this sprayer is obviously eight or nine years old but I'll show turn the camera around and just show you the issues we've got with it on the wheel motors but that is going to be is being rectified now we've got Mark here from Housens this is what uh, has happened we've got some cracks on the wheel motors Mark's already done that one it's cracked at the back here and it's cracked a while ago as well we did it and that's a repair there, a plate that Ian put on probably a couple of years ago. And round here, Mark's just welded that one up. But you can just see the crack there just starting. Not where you can see it quite. If I can just move that, that light. Just a minute crack there. So there and then on the front we've had these cracked as well as we've done those whether we can quite see in there yeah put a plate on there and just painted that and the same the other side and it's these wheels because these wheels are so square they're all the time trying to um come up at this corner it's just putting a lot of pressure on those motors and uh, obviously when this sprayer goes in they're going to change those motor housings. All this will have, because they're slow, totally redesigned now, because this sprayer is, what, nine years old. They're completely redesigned. It was a prototype of housings, so they can be completely redesigned, so they'll have four new motor housings on when it goes in to be sold as a second-hand sprayer. We've got Fine Turf here. If you remember, that's the company uh, that does the football pitches with Tillers Turf, where we had the turf laid out the back of the stables that convert into offices. So we've done that and Simon's brought them here ready for putting these planings through the screed. Got a little dumper here. Lakeland's is the other company that Simon's got with, which has got the machinery side of it. So we're going to put these planings through the screen to get to make get the big lumps out. And you can see from the diet here behind me just here while we've been away 
uh, he's been cracking on with the dikes last week Ruben and Tom have been helping him a lot and uh, they have got some of the culverts cleared but uh, with the with the um, tires so uh, thank you for all the uh, offers of, uh, of help and suggestions on how to get those done uh, but unfortunately uh, I haven't got any footage of them doing it but they used some bigger tires and they've got the culverts done so Nala's pleased we're home she was in kennels last week because my daughter Sam couldn't have her and she was on her own, which is the first time she's been on her own since we have her, but she's all right, she's, she's okay, pleased to be back. Yeah, just looking across here, we've got some rabbit holes in this bank, just at the top across here. And just see rabbits have been in down there and it's come through in the opposite bank. There's a drain found there, which is good. Yeah, so we just need to sort those rabbits because they're a pain in the backside. Done a really good job with this dike down here. Another drain coming out there. Now, Barry can't find any of the pipes in the dike. Ruben and Tom can't find them in front of him. They're so far in the bank. So he's using his dividers and uh, putting a peg in where the, uh, where the pipes are. So those of you who haven't seen how these dividers work some people can use them some people can't and I can't use them but this is how it works there we are, are you on the top? Oh, straight on look. straight over that pipe no you can see why we need to take some of the bank off it's just too slow stunt and the dike's just too small. Nala knows where it's going. Brought the fuel bowser. Fill the fill the barrier up with, with fuel. Excavators are normally meant to be on white diesel when they're on construction jobs. Uh, that was a law came in, I think, about two years ago. Obviously, white diesel's a lot dearer. Same diesel you put in your in your car and vehicles, but. Um, now, with, because you're on, we're on doing agricultural work, we can go on red with this. So that's what we're putting in, uh, in here. You'll see and remember from the videos last year, we redid this bowser. We cleaned it out and put this lid on, welded all this lid here and did around the top because it was... Uh, got a lot of sediment in the tank and couldn't get it to clean it out so we put this lid on breathe the pipe at the top so we cleaned it all out made a lot better job of it really old bowser this one Housem sprayers made it before they started to make sprayers when they were just a village blacksmith um, which would be probably 35 years ago Ruben's just clearing this beat pad. This is where we're going to be putting the tarmac planings when they come off the uh, screen. Just clearing this up. And then we're going to put the planings here. For anybody who doubts how much good farmers do for wildlife and nature and environment, just look at this. There's a songbird bucket feeder there. You can see all the songbirds flying about in the hedge and down onto the feeder. And because they litter food down, you've got a pheasant feeding underneath it. This is just in a quiet area of the farm. And these trees were planted ourselves. We've got another area there that's in the countryside stewardship, a winter bird food plot to help the wildlife and the environment provide habitat and food throughout the winter. And here is a very, very happy cock pheasant with songbirds above him. So it's all go here, now in the yard with these planings. Got the 360 load in the hopper, then the hopper feeding the elevator. Dropping in at the top, 
Not bad. And then these are all the bigger lumps. Going out there to a heap out there. There's a few bigger lumps here, but still no more than 50 mil, so they'll be fine, as you see in the hand. Lots of small stuff, fine dust as well to bed in. So it's doing a really good job here. Tom's on the smaller dumper. But yeah, it's doing a good job. Here, the bigger lumps coming out. Just a size reference against my hand. You can see how big some of these lumps are. This is where we're storing them on one of the beet pads. You recognise this from when we had sugar beet in this field before it was dragged. It went into the factory early December. It's the beauty of having these big concrete storage areas. We've got the concrete panels around the outside. All screened. So a cracking job when we get these down on the farm roads. Tom's just going to push up now some of the, this and that's the blade we use for sugar beet. It's really solid this stuff but that blade's great on the front rather than the bucket and just get it up a bit higher. A lot of weight in front of that blade though. You just see by the tyres just scratching a little bit. So it's that time of year again, it's the NFU conference, they've just arrived for this two day job at the International Conference Centre in the middle of Birmingham. Should be a good event, we've got Teresa Coffey talking to us, the Secretary of State, we've got Mark Spencer, we've also got Keir Starmer, uh, the Labour leader, so it should be a great couple of days here and interesting questions. Always good to network with fellow farmers and everybody here who you only see once a year. Everybody's just queuing up. You have to show your invitation letter down at the bottom of the escalator. And come upstairs here. It's well organised. Comes on your surname. And this is the registration area. Do that. And then give them the name badge. And to me, this is mine. Where you live, or what shoes you fill. The best start to the day is with British food. Produced across the country by all of us. Driving the economy, employing millions, and supporting the nation, both on farm and beyond. The streets of London are absolutely packed and we've brought farming to the city. Across the land, expertly managed. This soil is all about being careful with it and love by great British farmers. 
delivering to the nation. We're the voice of British farming. And we stand together. We are the NFV. Welcome to conference. Commitments to promote domestic food production, to properly incentivize sustainable and climate friendly farming, to put farmers and growers at the heart of our trade policy, to guarantee our food security, and to back British farming and British food. The NFU will always stand tall as a constructive partner in achieving those commitments. Rural season in the country. Uh, farming was a key part, as Bennett said, of his leadership campaign last year. And I was delighted that he was recently able to host Bennett at, uh, at number 10 Downing Street. And I know firsthand the value that he attaches to farmers and to the importance that he puts on championing UK food and drink. And I was also delighted that he committed to holding the Food Security Summit in number 10 uh, this year. So, ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister. Hi everyone. Farmers are the bedrock of our country, so I wanted to send this message to simply say thank you. Thank you for your work to look after almost three quarters of our countryside. Thank you for protecting our natural heritage. And thank you for the fantastic food you produce and we all enjoy. You shape so many of the things that we love, from our landscape to Swaledale lamb and Kitson's pork pies just from my part of the world in North Yorkshire. So as Prime Minister, I want to make sure that you know that I am standing up for you and that I will work day in and day out to ensure that you can continue to play your vital role in our country and our economy for many years to come. Thank you and have a great conference. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, very much. It's a pleasure to be here back in uh, Birmingham for the NFU conference. I was last year for the Conservative Party conference uh, in October. It strikes me that uh, uh, it appears that farmers need less police than the Conservative Party needs to look after. But uh, uh, it's good to be here. It's good to hear from you, uh, Minette, and of course the Prime Minister. Well, it's certainly the, the money that we've got available. We've committed to uh, making sure that money is completely ring fenced. That should be, that needs to be as unequivocal as a politician. Uh, this evening couldn't take place, and I can't tell you how amazing it is to see so many people sat down to this dinner tonight. I think we've got over 1,200 people sat. Uh, here in, in this room. So absolutely phenomenal. And it, and it couldn't happen without our amazing sponsors. <laughs> of the welcome drinks. Sponsorship of the dinner. Mm? To Marks and Spencer for donating the wine. Yeah. And donating the beef. for donating the cheese board, the mustard and the horseradish. And, and it's sort of much needed, I think, for all of us. Uh, dare I say, on the back of the um, political sessions, I mean, I, what do I think? What do I want to say? I mean, we... <laughs> You don't just want me to say it, because uh, I'll regret it, and, and you will too. Um, but what, what I do think is that, you know, it's, it's the power of, of all of you. It's because we are uh, an organisation that is, that is led by farmers, that is owned by farmers, means that, that we can challenge our political leaders, um, and indeed all parties, for what is right for our industry and backed up by the technical expertise that we have across England and Wales. It makes us extremely powerful, which is why we can get 
videos like we did from the Prime Minister. Um, we can get the Leader of the Opposition. We had a, a, a Minister of State, a Secretary of State. But as I say, that apolitical status that we have, I'm extremely proud of. And it just shows how important it is because I think we really do have a good relationship with Labour now. Jim McMahon was at the dinner, Daniel Zeitler was at the dinner, they both did meetings yesterday afternoon. We speak regularly with the Dem Liberal Democrats, I speak regularly with the Green Party, and it's, it's really, really important on your behalf at this, this critical time. I mean, I'm conscious on the front page of uh, just about every newspaper out there, uh, so much media that I did yesterday, we have been warning of food supply issues for so long now. Um, the situation in the egg sector, in the poultry meat sector, the situation in horticulture, all of these things, they can be overcome, but it really needs a, a fresh approach by government and a real desire to, to work with. And I did take real exception to the Secretary of State's denial that we weren't in market failure. Uh, in the egg sector, a billion less eggs in 2022 compared to 2019. The emails, the interaction I get, the brilliant work I have to say that the Poultry Board have done and Amy Mahoney, our Chief Advisor. It's, it's been a really, really tough time for some. A really, really tough time. And, and I take that responsibility on my shoulders and the team extremely seriously. Roger's wife is a vet. Sarah, what happens to the allied trades? I did a meeting before with David and Glynis and their lovely daughter Nella. Glynis is a dentist. Um, it's, it's absolutely, in many parts of the country, agriculture is underpinning the very way of life that so many communities take for granted. But together, we will get action. We will end the journey of, of words that we would be in a very, very bad place, I think, right now, without the NFU and without you. So please work with us. This is about all of us. A massive thanks. The year ahead, 12 months till we meet again, there's a lot that needs to happen. There's a lot that needs to change. And I can absolutely promise you that we will leave no stone unturned anywhere to get the results that are needed. So thank you, conference. It's been wonderful to see you. It really has. Please enjoy your lunch, please keep in touch. And as I say every week uh, in that blog, please take care, take care wherever you are, because you know what we said about men mental health last night and FCN, we raised a record amount for them. They do an amazing job. So keep in touch with each other and look after yourselves. And above all else, thank you for all your support. So we've got all the planings through now. We've got these heaps of the big oversized stuff, but I'm surprised at how little we've got of this. I thought there'd have been more. Just shows how good the planings were in the first place. So we've got all the tackle air parked up now. So it's just a case now of getting the yard all squared up. And just getting it tidied up and swept up. One more thing, we've got Mark Spencer, his MC for the evening, and those of you who know uh, Mark Spencer is the DEFRA uh, Minister. So, uh, yeah, he's on the top table with us, so that should be a real entertaining evening. Right, this is going to get interesting. We've got the chairman now carving. I think he needs a bit of baler twine to go around the apron. That's a bit too thick for me. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Look at that. The job we've been doing is the bottom of these doors that all uh, the tin had rusted away so Ian's cut the bottom off and found a sheet of um, corrugated 
uh, zinc tin. So it's put some, you can see there, on the inside and made it vermin proof and waterproof. So done a really good job there. And riveted it on and just improved it. It was one of the non-conformances we had of Red Tractor this last time last year. So we had to get it done for that. So you'll recognize this uh, sugar beet storage area, this is where the planings are on. They're done now, the heap we had in the yards done. A few bigger lumps on this side, but that's only because they've rolled down the outside of the heap. But when you look at them compared to my hand, they're still good. A lot of fine, a lot of dust in there to bed in. So a lot of variable size, which is great. Anyway, just looking around um, here, <laughs> Nala's found a piece of sugar beet. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the field we had the sugar beet on. You just see how the dragging's really mellowed. It's doing a cracking job. How it's opening all up and drying and fracturing. And it's it's not light land. It's probably 30%, 35%, 40% clay, this one, and 25% silt. But, yeah, looking really good. Just a bit damp still in the bottom in these deeper areas. But this will be weathering a treat there when you look at that just show how it just crumbles so we just need to level this a bit it's a bit unlevel as you can see you just need to level it before we put the drill in there but another 10 days probably we might have a go at this see what the weather's like anyway that's it for another week if you've made it this far thank you very much for watching and uh cracky it's turned cold now uh, after the mild weather we've had it's got really cold anyway um yeah thanks very much for watching if you made it this far i uh, hope you've enjoyed this update lots going on at the minute and uh, whether there'll be one midweek or not next week just depends what we're going on i think there will i think i'll do one midweek a short one so thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time